individually. And the body of Christ, how every, every person is important. Every function, every purpose for those that are called is important. And we, what he's doing at this time, one of the things is not only setting in order, but he's bringing people in line with their purpose. And so I hope that you will think about what we're saying and apply your heart to understanding, seeking God for specifically how he wants to use you. He's making things beautiful, to spe specifying the calls, he said. And he's putting things in place and in order so that the body will be healthy. So that the body will be healthy. So I'm going to read another passage of scripture which is found in 1 Corinthians. And uh, I want you to help me out there. We'll read responsibly a few of these verses starting at chapter 12. And we're going to begin at verse 12. We're going to read all the way down through 31. And let's read responsibly. Verse 12 says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. I want you to notice the emphasis on spirit. All right? And um, before I read further, you see the emphasis in verse 3. Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. Verse 4, spirit. Same God in verse 6. Verse 7, spirit. Verse 8, spirit, twice. Verse 9, spirit, twice. 11, spirit. 13, spirit, twice. Are you with me? Now what verse we on? 14? For the body is not one member, but many and if the ear shall say because I'm not the eye I am not of the body is it therefore not of the body But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it had pleased him. But now are they many members, yet but one body. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. For our, un for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together 
having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Okay. For he says, verse 26, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Very simple illustration. First, he talks about Christ's body, he being the head and the church is the body, right? And he likened the body of Christ to uh, the natural body that we can relate to, right? And when he said if one member suffered, then all the members are suffering. If I pinch my finger, my whole body hurt, right? Isn't that right? Yeah. So see the illustration because that's what he wants us to see. The other part of my body, my other part of my body, so I don't feel anything. It doesn't work like that, right? The central nervous system make sure that the whole of the body feels a pain. So it's a, a tremendous truth in this, what Paul is uh, trying to get over to the church at Corinth because they showed favoritism. They had schism, divisions in the body. Some believed in Paul, some believed in Peter, some believed in Apollos, and some said, well, I just believe in Jesus. I don't believe, in, you know, I'm, I'm, this is who I'm following. So uh, it brought divisions and they at that time they were immature, they were carnal, operating just like mere humans. And so he brought that out, teaching them that the excellent way, well, even when you have the gifts, and although the gifts have purpose, uh, we must not forget that faith works by love, right? And uh, so they were, they had lost sight of uh, the wisdom in the operation. More than anything, God loves, and he is love. That's the essence of his nature. He's love. And when all the gifts are functioning, they function in love, by faith, in love. Faith works by love. So love is the motive, the motivation. And he brought that to them. Uh, I thought about all the fingers on my hand or hands. All of the fingers have purpose. Now watch this. If I want to point to my wife, watch my fingers. You wouldn't do that, would you? What about this? There is a purpose, so when I point, automatically, this is the finger, right? But I got five of them. So if I said, Wanda, that's appropriate, right? Well, why is this not appropriate? It's a finger. Now, if I, had a, if I was going to carry a sword, and I decided I was going to use my thumb, could I hold that sword? I need the thumb, right? So this hand has fingers and all the fingers have a different purpose, right? And 
Uh, but I thought about that, how simple it is, but profound, the fact that all of these are fingers. And when I get ready to pick up something, I need all of these fingers, right, to pick up. Now watch this. If I'm going to pick up this, you see how awkward? If, if something right here wasn't where I could put my hand on it like that, then I wouldn't be able to lift it. But it's so easy when I do this. I'm using all five. Simple but profound. We are not complete as a body until we recognize all of us are important. And God has distributed honor equally. And to the ones that are more noticeable, uh, the, the greatest honor is not upon them. It's upon the uncomely parts. Right? And one man shared it. He could have been obviously maybe talking about the organs, um, sex organs. But be that as it may, they are more important than my hands and my feet, right? And yet they're uncomely parts. So, uh, but the important thing is to understand that we all, we need every part of our body. I need both hands. Otherwise, he would have given me one. Right? Same way with the body of Christ. Everything is needed in the body of Christ. The more we can grasp and understand that, it makes it better. Now what happens or what makes things better is when all the body parts come to the level of understanding their function and functioning. Then it makes it clearer for everybody, right? And so it's, that's why it's so important that each one find the purpose and the calling where God has called us. Ecclesiastes says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Every purpose under heaven. We have been called out of darkness. Paul said in Ephesians, so we must work, walk worthy of the calling wherewith we were called. So there's a calling, and each one of us have been called because we were called out of something into something, right? Called out of darkness into light. So every one of us that were called out of darkness have a purpose and a function that we must find in God. All right? Now, we said to our leaders, uh, he brought back to me that the gifts will function according to the call and purpose. If you have not discovered your gifts, you must find out what you're called to. Once you find out what you're called to and begin to move in that direction, then the gifts that, that are to accompany that call will automatically begin to come into play. Are, are you with me? So it's important if you, um, some time ago God said that the body of Christ, many were unhappy, unfulfilled, unsatisfied, no joy, no peace. Uh, so once I found what I was really called to and my purpose, it brought a sense of uh, significance and a sense of usefulness that I didn't have, which brought peace and joy to my heart. It brought satisfaction. So if a person is not satisfied, they are probably not moving in their calling accurately. Because when the person moves into their calling, they're going to feel fulfilled, useful, functioning, and satisfied. Are you with me? So it's very important now, each one of us, no one should say, well, I don't think I could do anything. Being is first. 
Are you with me? If I am who God says I am, or if I become what he wants me to be, then he will teach me what he wants me to know and help me perform what he wants me to do. But being is first. Right? So, a child of God, a Christian, we're God's children. And we've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Since we've come to the kingdom for such a time as this, it is imperative that we find out our function and purpose, right? It's very important. Now, if I'm being redundant, it's for purpose. We must begin to discover what we are specifically called to. Um, gifts adornment, the body is sluggish, suffering for a lack of purpose and function. God wants to do something about this. At this time, and he said to me that he was uh, going to begin to establish the specifics in people's lives so that they can begin to find their place in the body and begin, the body as a whole can begin to function and become healthy. Uh, remember the man in the Bible that had the withered hand? He wasn't whole. He wasn't whole because he couldn't use one of his hands. We got some withered hands in here. What do you mean? Some that are the hands are not functioning because they don't know what they're called to. God want to change that. He want to change that. All right. We just read in Corinthians. Now, I want to turn you to Romans 12. And I'm going to read the first five verses. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living, what? Sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the first thing we talked about being, he says yield. First is we must learn to yield to God. And after we learn to yield to God, we must prepare ourselves mentally. The second verse says be mentally prepared. The first deals with yielding to God, spirit, and the second deals with be, being mentally prepared. Because the mental preparation is very important for, the, for being active or doing what God wants done, right? I am not the person that was just called out of darkness. I am not the same fella but that I was before I was called out and, and redeemed from darkness. I'm not the same person. I've come into light. I've come into life. And now I must function in light. I must function now by the spirit. Am I communicating? It's very important. We must no longer be satisfied be, you know, just warm in the pew. But we must find why we were called into the kingdom for such a time as this. You and I could have been brought into the kingdom 2,000 years ago. I've said it many times. We could have been born during the time of Moses. We could have been Egyptian. We could have been Assyrians. We could have been some of the nations of the world. We could have been part of that, but we were not. We could have been born during the time of Jesus Christ or the prophets or Noah. And we could have been a part of the flood and been all wasted away. Are you listening? We could have been there, but we were not. 
we were brought into the kingdom at this late hour when God is about to change the whole order of things. So now since we have been brought in at this late stage after uh, thousands of years have gone by, many people have died prematurely. Some died in the sea, some died through perils, some, some people died through destruction and war, poverty. Many people died, but you and I are still here. We have a specific purpose. Somebody say purpose. So every individual now, I repeat, must pursue purpose. If I want to find out the purpose of a thing, where do I go? Go to the one that created the thing, right? The best mechanic, auto mechanic of a Mercedes or a Cadillac is the, the people that made them, right? They are the professionals. So God created us. And he brought us into the kingdom at this hour. And if he saved us to this hour, at the time and age of grace, we must now find our specific purpose. Purpose is in God. Well, you say, well, what are you talking about? There are many doctors, right? If I was a doctor and somebody says, are you, what, what's your profession? I say, I'm a doctor. Would that satisfy them? Not really because they know there are many kinds of doctors, right? So then they would inquire, well, what kind of doctor? What do you specialize in? You may say, well, I'm just a general practitioner. Oh, I'm uh, a specialist, but I'm still a doctor, right? So, maybe you're a foot doctor, but you're still a doctor. So, the podiatrist will study so that he can learn all the functioning parts in the muscles and the nerves that, that cause the feet to function. The general practitioner may have a general knowledge but he will not have the specific knowledge of the feet. Are you with me? Like the podiatrist or the foot doctor because that's his special calling. Am I communicating? That idea came from God. Man wasn't smart enough to do that. The idea came from God. Uh, when people have a problem with their heart, uh, if a person didn't know any better, he was going to the podiatrist, said, I got a heart problem. <laughs> Do you think he's going to get any help? Not going to happen, right? The podiatrist is going to send him, he said, you need a, cardi a cardi cardiologist. And he said, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the knowledge of that. So there's no point in going to him, right? If I want to find my purpose, I must inquire of my creator. He knows why he made me and for what use. What about a lawyer? Some people have been inspired to become lawyers. Person ask you, what's your profession? A lawyer. Will they be satisfied? Because you have many lawyers, right? And so they would further go on to say, I'm a criminal lawyer. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. I'm, but the, the specifics is the area where one specializes in 
so that he can do well in that specific calling. I know it's elementary, but it's still profound. I want to drive this truth home because the Lord began to speak to me about this. Everyone must find out it's not enough to say I'm a born-again believer. It's not enough to say I'm a minister. It's not enough. Because your anointing will go along with your specific call. What the Lord made me see is that there are many ministers and pastors that have not actually found out the specifics of their calling so they never fulfilled, they died prematurely, they did not carry it out because they never found out the type of anointing that goes with their function and usefulness. Somebody say praise the Lord. I heard Kenneth Hagin say the Lord told him, he said, many of uh, my ministers don't ever get to the first phase of what I've called them to do. And I remember 30 years ago, God said to me, he said, son, you don't know what you're all about. When I found out it was God, I paused and said, well, God, what am I all about? So he began to specify what I was all about. So after I found out more about what I was all about, then I began to pursue the knowledge so that I can become what God intended for me to become. Are you with me? Every person has that that they must do. All right. Now, there, there is some help because many times God will show other uh, seasoned prophets uh, an office that a person may have, but you can't stop there. And I remember a man came to me years ago, probably... Uh, 40 years ago, I was at the other church and he said, uh, young man, uh, and I was leading devotions. He said, that young man there that lead devotions, he said, I think they call you Larry. And I said, yeah. He said, come here. And, and he said, God is calling you to be a prophet. And he said, uh, he's going to begin to deal with you in dreams and vision. Well, that had already started happening about a couple of weeks back. So I knew the man was speaking something that I need to pay attention to. I've been having dreams and vision, and vision would come just like a television screen before my eyes. I'd see things, and it was new to me. And uh, so, uh, and then he began to pull me into prayer more. I began to feel just hunger for prayer. These things had begun to happen. So the man began to speak, and I was worshiping God in my own little way. And I would try to worship like the Muslim. I'd bow my head down, and, you know, I, I was just trying to find how to function. He exposed that too. He said, God said, I'm going to teach you. He said, I, God said, I, I've seen how you tried to worship me. He said, but I'm going to teach you to worship me in spirit and in truth. And that's what he did. But it's when I began to get the more specifics of my life that things started to happen. Somebody need to hear this today. Because what you don't want to do is just say, well, I'm a minister. Well, I'm a prophet. What kind of prophet are you? I'm an apostle. Well, what kind of apostle are you? What are you called to? What's your specific? It's not enough anymore. I see people saying they're apostles all over the place and it looks like absolutely nothing is happening around them. So what are you saying? Until we find the specifics of our function, the gifts are not going to accompany our lives like they're supposed to. And let me tell you this, and you can take this to the bank. You are then no match for the devil. Why? You say, well, I got power and authority. Yeah, you do. But if God has anointed you in a specific area, that anointing will accompany your call and it was protection for you. And I remember God told me, I was trying to, just trying to make something happen, just working so hard and all the things and reaching out, praying and fasting so on and couldn't figure out why God was not letting things happen because I said, son, I'm protecting you. And every time I'd get, get anxious, he'd say, I'm, I'm protecting you. I was like, from, from what? From what are you protecting me from? Well, let me say it like this. David, before he was prepared and knew the specifics, he was a warrior. 
But he still wasn't ready. He didn't know that God hadn't brought him into the kingship. So finally he went through a series of things. Tried. He ran and fled from Saul. There's certain things he had to learn. He had to learn he, his life was like a fugitive. Uh, uh, there was a time that he fell into sin. There's a whole lot of things that he learned in a way. But then the time came when he became king over Judah, the southern kingdom. And as time went on, he became what God intended for him to be, king over both Israel and Judah. He was now ready. He had learned many things. And so the anointing accompanied him. God protects us from being wasted until he brings us to the point of understanding who's with us and what we got going for us and how we're to function. The devil knows when you know what's on you. He knows. And so God protects us from him until he brings us into more. So, Someone says, I'm a teacher. What do you teach? Well, I'm a teacher. Ain't that good enough? The teachers teach. So why do you need more information? Because you can't teach me if I don't know what you teach and what's your area especially, right? Well, I'm a, um, an English teacher. Then I know I need to watch my diction. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But the specifics is what God is after now. You must know what you're all about. I can't emphasize this enough because I've seen ministers. I remember one lady pastor lived to be high 80s in the ministry so many years Died. Just nothing happened. Just nothing. But they were just going around. God called me. God called me. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But they never learned what God had actually called them to do. How many know you're going to have to spend time to, talking to God in his presence? There's some shallow information God will give you when you talk to him just generally. But there's some more specific information that he'll give you when you make it important, when you talk to God. God entrusts the greater things to those that he can trust. Are you hearing me? So there are certain things that we have to do. So, all right. Many people die prematurely, lack of purpose and function. And if you don't know your function, you can rest assured you'll not make the goal. Making sense? You will not meet the goal until you understand what you're aiming at. One thing I found out about Satan is you don't care how much you, how they say, hook a Messiah. <laughs> Ain't even afraid of that. But what he is terrified with those that know what they were called to. Remember how God specified Paul's calling? He was an apostle, right? But he told him more specifically, I called you to, uh, to Gentiles. I called you to open their eyes and and. Turn them from darkness to light. And I mean, just more specific, this is what I called you to. During, up to that time, Jews weren't sent to the Gentiles. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? But, uh, but he gave him the specifics of his call. And I'm sure there's a whole lot of other things he talked to him when he was caught up in the third heaven. But those are there to show us that God wants to specify the call. And so Paul, um, he started out, once he got a little bit of information, he started out trying to do it. And then he had to go and learn. When he came out from Arabia, spent 14 years otherwise, God had taught him some things. He tried beforehand and nothing was really taking place. But the time came 
when he was ready. There are things that God had showed him and taught him that he could stand in the kind of anointing that was on his life so he could function now. And it came to a point where he began to deliver people. And then there was seven sons of one skeever. They saw Paul working and they got excited about it. I want that too, you know. And he said, but in, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached, I command you, come out of him. Demons looked at that man, the demons in that man said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. Who are you? They jumped on that man, those men, <laughs> wore them out, stripped them naked. They ran out. Y'all listen to what I'm saying. It's the anointing. We ain't nothing apart from that anointing. So when we stay with this anointing, we conquer. And that's why I've said it before. When Saul fell, it should have never happened. Why? Because he had been anointed. And so David said in so much sorrow, don't publish this thing. That the anointed of God fell. Don't, 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 don't publish that. Because it should have never happened. When you know what you're called to, and when you walk in that calling, you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Now the body of Christ. Picture this one holy man, Jesus the head, and the body is all the parts and members of, of this him. This Jesus moving in the earth. Everybody knows their function. What a dynamic organism. Unstoppable. That's what God wants us to see. The body of Christ being instructed from the head. What if, what if, what if I didn't have any brain? Could I, could, I, could I command this body? Would it, would it follow me? Couldn't, right? Because the intelligence is up the same way with Jesus. So we have to connect with Christ and understand his way, the way he wants to function and set us in the body. Are you with me? If we're going to be effective. And God said, a church that has no vision is a church that has no spiritual leadership. There are a lot of churches that don't have spiritual leadership. They got people, but they don't have the spiritual leadership because they don't have the instructions for that assembly or for that ministry from headquarters. Are you hearing me? So, the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. The people become immoral. The people cast off restraint. They live loosely where there's no revelation. The people live any kind of way. Vision comes from God. So God began to tell me, you don't know what you're all about. And so I was like, I rebuked that. He just waited until I came to my senses. And it was like he said, I don't, say, I don't know how far you're going to get trying to rebuke me. God is awesome. He's good. Now, he talked to me about the realm of the spirit. All right. First, we need to see ourselves as spirit beings. All right. 
As it's, got to, it's important for us to see ourselves born of the Spirit. In John 1, he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All right, I'm going to turn there. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. In the beginning, God. In Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be light. Everything originated out of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is spirit, right? Everything originates from spirit, from God. God he says in Hebrews 11, he said, uh, uh, um, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things that are seen were not made of things which appear. Are you with me? It is spirit first. Somebody say spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Spirit ram. And so God wants to get us out of the natural ram into the spirit ram. All the great inventions were there to help man, but they came from God. God used the secular people just like he used the, the, the sacred ones. He'll put something in them and they'll, if, they'll, if they're obedient, an invention, inter, invention will come. Maybe an airplane or maybe, do you know, did you know the, the, uh, the Wright brothers had their, their father, I believe that's, I got it, the story right, was a bishop? Spirit world first. Spirit first. So it's out of spirit that God began to uh, bring in inventions. And notice this. The airplanes was to help better mobilize transportation for man. Are you with me? When God gives things, God gives things, he's concerned about his creation. He so loved the creation. He saw that the day would come when we, we would need a greater sense of transportation. And so God put it in the mind of a person to make something that would mobilize us faster to go across the nations of the earth. God, it was God doing this here. And God saw the time that the horse and buggy would not be enough when the population increased. So God made gave an idea of call, but the idea came from spirit. Somebody say spirit. Spirit, it came from God. And when God gives an idea and people follow the idea, it will manifest to help humanity. Come on, let's give God a praise in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ships, bridges, Cars, trains, air conditioning, heaters, all for man. Certainly didn't need them in heaven, right? They were made for man. Are you getting the picture here? God cares for humanity more than we could ever care for. So when God calls us, he's going to call us with a specific calling so that we can somehow offer service to humanity. Are you with me? So if somebody say I'm called, they're called to do stuff that doesn't benefit the service of humanity, I question it. God made man for himself. The diamonds, the minerals in the earth. God gave man the wisdom to cultivate it, to bring them out. The iron and all these others. God did this thing. And so one must submit to God Seek to please him and come into their giftings. God, what am I all about? And so, it's interesting. It's interesting if I get excited. Don't mind me. I get to thinking about what God is saying. And so God wants to 
place us. Now, I, and we're going to start. This is where he starts. And I was talking to God. Okay, God, all these prophets. I mean, what, are they, there's got to be a distinction. What, what are these, you know, why you got so many prophets? Even in our midst, a little small church, but so many prophets. What is the purpose? And so God began to talk to me. Don't you listen to what he said? He gave me three categories of the prophets. I'm not saying this all of them. It may or may not be, but this is what he gave me. And that was what he was, it, it pleased him to stop right there. He said there's prophetic intercessors. There are prophetic worshipers. And there are prophetic warriors. The prophetic intercessors don't necessarily spend long hours before God in prayer. They do pray. But they intercede for the needs of the body. Prophetic worshipers have inspirational worship and revelation in music and in songs. David was a prophetic worshiper. He would worship and as he worshiped, prophetic songs would come. Spirit of prophecy was in and out on him when he was worshiping. So there are prophetic worshipers, God said, and then he said there are prophetic warriors. The prophetic warriors, he said they're frontliners. Mostly these spend long hours in prayer. They pull down territorial spirits and witchcraft spirits, he said. And he said they can be both national and international. He talked a little about the breaker's anointing. And they're people that have giftings. And they carry a breaker's anointing. This breaker's anointing breaks the yokes off of people, groups at the time. This is God's doing. So a person can't say, oh, I like that. Let me see if I can do that. It doesn't work like that. It takes God. So now, he's starting here. I don't know where he'll end up, but he, God says he's bringing the, the church in line because he said when the vision is time for the vision fulfillment and we don't know what to do, it's going to frustrate his plan. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so right now, at times, we're frustrating his plan. He said, what do you mean? Because most of us don't know what we're specifically called to do. So this is what God is saying. Prophets, if you know that you're called to the prophetic office, and may I say prophets have at least four gifts, two to three revelation gifts functioning regular in their lives. And prophecy. If you know that you are called to the prophetic office, we're going to start there. I want you to stand and gently come front. And what we're going to do is Prayerfully, and want you to be prayerful as well to find out what area of the prophetic call you are about. We're going to work with you, and God's going to work with you to function. And all that you're about is going to come into play. And you'll begin to see things happen and shown to you like you've not understood what happened because of God and because of the timing. So if you know that, some of you, I know you know already that you're called to the prophetic, but if there are those of you that you're not sure, if God has been speaking to you in 
uh, by way of word of knowledge. Word of knowledge can come in different ways. It can come in a dream. It can come just by the voice of God. It can come uh, a vision. It can come different ways. The important thing is the word is a fragment of God's knowledge. Word of wisdom deals with the future. And then the discerning of spirits. Almost all prophets will have discerning of spirits. Now, just because a person has discerning of spirits doesn't mean they're called to the prophetic. But if you are called to the prophetic, you'll more than likely have discerning of spirits, word of knowledge, and word of wisdom. Two to three, all of them, and two, and, and all, all of them will work in your life and prophecy. So we're going to bring it down. I'm, 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 I'm downloading now. I've said the heart of what I've had to say. So that anointing is lifting a little bit. But I want to say, I want you to stand if you know that God has made it clear to you that you're called to the prophet, prophetic. You know, I, I think about a football team. What if uh, the coach had these 11 players, the offenses, football players, you can tell me. But if they are get ready to, before they run the play, they have to be in position, right? And if they're not in position, it frustrates them running the play. So God, because he's ready to move, he needs us in position, all right? Now the gifts, as, as God said, the gifts are going to accompany your call. And it's tremendous because you can better appreciate and understand what you're all about. You'll be able to do more. We'll be able to do more as a prophetic group against the forces of evil. God has a strategy. And it's following God's strategy that's going to tear down the kingdoms of darkness. Now, again, these... We're going to trust God to, I'm not going to try to reveal to you, that's something that God, I want you to begin to talk to God. God, what's the nature of my prophetic call? And I, for a while, I would talk to people about what you should actually should do about my prayer life. So one minister says, I don't talk to people about my prayer life. I thought, wow, you know, that's personal. That's between me and God. But I didn't know. I didn't know any better. So in my talking to people, some of them couldn't relate. It's like, man, how do you spend that kind of time in prayer? For me, it was like breathing. But I, now I understand. He says, because you're a prophetic warrior. pull down territorial demons becomes bigger than a little assembly regions you know where God or demons are, are sitting over uh, communities and just wreaking havoc you have that authority in God to pull them down set the community free but if you don't know it how you gonna do it how you gonna function so when he was talking to me about this I said oh my God no one understanding what you're called to. Now, God is going to talk to you and give you the specifics. And then after this, we want to divide these different groups. And I want to get with each one of you. And I'm going to be sharing more insight. And then God is going to take it from there and begin to speak to you what I'm saying. And he's going to give you more so that at a later date when if you are a prophetic intercessor you're going to understand more of your office and calling you're going to understand more about your life and a lot of things because now you're functioning and their gifts are going to awaken and repeat 
in your life. And so your life now is going to take on a deeper sense of purpose. And you'll find the fulfillment that your heart has been longing for. And you'll feel useful in this dynamic kingdom. You may be a prophetic intercessor. You intercede. needs of the body you may be a prophetic worshiper where you bring inspiration and worship before I came here I was a prophetic worshiper and I would sing and the power would come and people yokes be destroyed people would just weeping just crying and we just singing Sometimes I would say a few words and it would come out like a prophecy. Inspired prophetic worshipers are very important to the body of Christ. And they're prophetic warriors, frontliners. The hottest part of the battlefield are the frontliners. We saw Sister Scott come up and prayed. God set us free from whatever was standing between us in worship. Unbeknowing to her, the anointing came to break the yokes. It's not the first time that happened. understanding what we're all about we're in the body of Christ I remember walking and seeing where they were building a new building church building and I saw stacks of bricks tied together coming from the manufacturer waiting to be used And until those bricks became like those on the wall, they were bricks, but they were useless. They were useless sitting out there on the ground. But what I saw, the brick mason opened it up and began to one by one put them in place and began to see the building one supporting another no man is an island no man stands alone We're all a part of this body Father I pray now are these prophets I've given them what you gave me now I ask of you Lord that as they talk to you about the individual call that you would begin to channel them into the specific areas of their lives and let the accompanying gifts of the Holy Ghost empower them like never before let them find that sense of usefulness knowing what they're all about and Lord that no one will get in another's way because just like this body one hand don't get in the way of the other hand none of my fingers get in the way of another one because they all have purpose and I need every one of them. It's the same way with the body of Christ. I ask you now, by the power of your spirit, glory. come now and make
specific, oh God, these calls. And begin to teach and instruct them from your throne what they're all about. So that they don't have to take man's word, but they can know because the same God that talked to the leaders talked to them about this thing. Making them all that they need to be. Oh God, I thank you. But this is your doing. And you're bringing us in order now because of what you're getting ready to do. So that we'll know how to function. I thank you, Father. Speak, Lord. As we give ourselves to you now. Speak, Lord. you begin to talk to him and praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. These are the prophets that you're going to position and they're going to be very dynamic and effective in the kingdom of God because they've been anointed. Thank you, Father. Would you begin to talk to God now about your call? Hallelujah, Jesus. Just lift your voices and talk to him. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Bear witness now, Lord God, to these calls. In the name of Jesus Christ. Identify the prophetic warriors, the prophetic worshipers, and the prophetic intercessors. We need them now. We need them now, Lord. We need them now for the advancement of your kingdom. Ah, glory to God. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Oh, yes, Lord, speak to us. Speak to your people now. By your Holy Spirit to set us in order now. As they lift your voices to God, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. It'll prolong your life. It'll prolong your health. Hallelujah, Jesus.